Okay, today we are going to take a look at how you can get three rows or three columns, I should say, to line up and be the same height or at least as certainly have the background of them all be the same height. We've all been building something and we all got a bunch of images and text and whatnot in these columns and we go, man, it would sure be nice if they were all the same height at the end, especially if you got a background or border or box shadows or anything around them. And so that's what we're going to take a look at here, both in 1.0, ClickFunnels 1.0, you're seeing here on the screen, and then we're going to do it in ClickFunnels 2.0. In 1.0, we're going to just use a couple lines of CSS. In 2.0, we are going to use uh, the Flex container that is built right into uh, ClickFunnels and gives you a huge amount of things you can do. So um, right here on the page, as you can see, if you're familiar with ClickFunnels at all, you've done this before. You got a three row, no, three column row. So you got the row, you got the three columns inside of it. And then inside of each one of these columns, there are other elements. There's the inner parts of the column, and then there are the um, the elements themselves. So let's just take a look at our column here, and we'll just go to our second column. So here we have the background color of green for that second column. But if we click on the hashtag, we can see what else we have in here. And this is the CSS ID selector for this center column. And so not only, like I said, we started with our row, but then we have a column right here. And then we also have a column inner. So we got a class of col inner inside of the column itself. So we need to affect it at all three levels, at the row, the column and the column inner, we need to set what is known as the property of display in CSS with the value of flex. And that will get them all three to line up. And then I'll show you a little trick on how you can get them to space apart differently. So let's just go here to the level of our row. So as I said on the other, we have a row, we have a column. So here are our three columns. Call left 159, call center 159, call right 133 are three columns inside of this row. And then in each side, uh, inside of each one of these columns, then we have our call inner right here. So that's a class of call dash inner. Inside of the call inner, then we have our different headline elements right in there. So we're going to close that up because we don't need to see that or this right now. So first off, we're going to take a look at our row. And so, like I said, we're going to apply to each one of these three levels exactly the same thing. And it is right down here. I have it, uh, I put a little slash in there to cause a syntax error to turn it off for a minute. So what we have here for each one of the rows, we have display of flex. And so you, I turn that on and you go, oh, it didn't do anything. Well, you're right, it didn't do anything yet. But now we're going to come into the column itself. And we are going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to turn that on inside of this column. And once I take this out and click outside of here, you're going to see now we got the same color top to bottom uh, all the way on this on these three columns here. So like I said, if you got a background color, uh, box shadows, borders, anything, they will now all line up nice and neat. So let me just show you from a CSS standpoint what I did so far. What I got here is just at the row and then at the inner content level. So let me show you where I got the inner content from because I was talking all along about the column, column, column. Well, in here, they also have a class right over here of inner content. So every one of these columns has that same class of inner content. So if we say we grab our CSS ID selector for our row and we give that and the CSS ID selector is right here. I gotta move this over a little bit. Here is a CSS ID selector for that row. So if we combine that then with inner content, it will say, give me all of the elements that have the class of inner content inside of this row. So that's exactly what the code is you're seeing over here. You have row right here, and then you have row and all of the elements inside of it with inner content. Or more accurately, here you have the row here you have all of the inner content elements inside of that row. That's exactly what that means. So give us the three elements inside of there. And in both cases here, we say display flex. So if we come over here now, we got them all three displaying properly. But now you say to yourself, well, how can I 
change this around. I got an image in here. I got a sub headline, a headline, a paragraph, some bullet points, whatever you got in here. I want different spacing on there. Well, there are different elements you can do in here. First off, every one of these elements, you can still apply your top margin to and be able to move them down based on that. But in the CSS, we can do one more thing, which is go to that call inner that we had right here. And in the call inner, we can turn that on as well, give that also a display of flex. And then you're going to see here, whoa, it got all jacked up. Okay, well, what we have to do now is we're going to come in to this little element right here, and we're going to click on this, and we're going to say, okay, well, well, actually, let me back up here. So let's go up here to our row element, because the row element has exactly the same thing. And if you turn, if you click this little flex thing here, it will turn on some lines over here. You may not be able to see it on the video. They're kind of faint. But what also we can do is come down here. So again, we are in the row element, and we're going to click on this. And in this case here, oops, let me go back in and let me turn this one back off. Let me turn that off for right now and come back into our row now. And so in this flex element right here, what we have set are just the defaults. And the defaults we care about here are that we want this in a row format. So meaning going across like this. So we got, so we got, we got a singular row in the we got a singular row in the row element itself, and we are not allowing them to wrap. So we just got the three items side by each in there. And then also the other one we want to talk about here is align items of stretch. So these are the three defaults for this value inside, or for this, I'm sorry, these are the default values for this property in CSS when you're dealing with flex. So that's what's turned on there. Now, if we come down to our call inner, you're going to see we're going to have exactly the same three defaults. And in this little tool, it does not highlight the defaults, but these are the defaults that are set. But now when we turned on this call inner uh, with the flex inside the call inner, why it got all jacked up is because it was still applying those three same defaults. And we don't want that anymore because we no longer want our items going from left to right. What we want is we want them coming top to bottom. So we want all these headlines on top of each other. So we're going to go here from row to column. Now we're back to having them all on top of each other. And we don't want to turn this to wrap or anything. We still want this to no wrap. And you notice down here is when I change this, watch, watch these elements down here. When I change from here to here, you can see it flips it sideways. All the elements in the bottom will flip when you change these two elements right here. And you'll notice exactly the same thing when you are in 2.0. But now we have everything the way we want, top to bottom. Like I said, you can put in, you can put in padding, of course, inside of your column, uh, right, right inside the editor itself. You can put the, um, on each one of the elements, you can put your top margin in there inside of the element, inside of the editor itself. But then also in the CSS here, we can say, okay, let's let's spread these apart further. Okay, so we're going to come over here and we're going to look for the one that looks like what we are dealing with. So we got lines on top, lines on the bottom. Okay, well that's what we're looking at here. So let's click this one here to center it and you'll see all the content went to the center. And now we can do it all to the top, all to the bottom. And then there's three other ones here. It says space between, space around, and space evenly. So let's go space between, space around, and then space evenly. So between these items right here, and also the, um, the fact, like I said, you can put in your your own margins, other things. Plus you can use other CSS on top of this if need be to get this to work. So the only thing we need to copy out of here, right down here at the bottom is I'm going to copy this line right here. It says justify content space evenly. And I'm gonna take that over into here. I'm gonna turn this back on by removing that syntax error that I caused. That's not a proper way to comment. That just causes a syntax error, which kills the code. And so now we're going to put in here our justify content space evenly. 
And if we save this page and then we reload this page, it should end up looking exactly like we have here. Cross your fingers. Hopefully it will work properly. And let me pause for so it took a little bit for my uh, computer to uh, get working right here. So let's do a preview of this page to see what it looks like once we got all the code in. And it should look exactly like it had before we went on our break, but it is not, or is it? Let me pause for a second. And the reason it is not is because we um, did a couple changes in the developer tool, but we did not do those changes inside of the code itself. So let's take a look at what we had done in here. So we had come in here to the call inner when we did the space evenly, but we also did not change this part right here where we go flex direction of column. So let's copy that out of there as well. So we'll copy that. We will put that into the code and we can put that right after here. And we'll just clean that up a little bit right there and we'll click on save. And now we will refresh the page again and hopefully it will work right this time. And there we go. We finally got everything looking the way we wanted it to. So now let's take a look at how we do the exact same thing with 2.0. And like I said, it's totally different in here because as we saw with 1.0, let's close this out. We start with a three column row like this. Well, if we come into 2.0 and we start with a three column row, we would have to do exactly the same thing we just did with the other and 1.0 and we would have to do it completely with CSS. But we don't want to do that. So let me pause for one second here and then I will show you what we need to do. So what we're going to do in here is we are going to use flex just like we did in 1.0, but there is actually a flex element in 2.0. But we also have to build a structure that is similar to what we have here. So we need to have a bounding row with some sort of columns inside of it. And we can build all of that with flex. It just takes a little bit and I'll show you how to do it. So we're going to add a row, but instead of grabbing one of these rows here, we are going to grab a hold of flex, the flex container right here, and we're going to put in that flex container. Now, anytime I'm working with flex containers, what I like to do is just come in here and just turn on a border just so I can see the outside of them. Otherwise, you got to kind of be moving your mouse around and, and hopefully finding where they are. Now, inside of here, we're going to add a new element. But instead of adding an element, what we're going to do is we're going to add another flex container because we basically have to build the equivalent of these three columns. So I'm going to add this here, and we're going to click on Flex again, and we're going to do our Flex. Now let's come into this Flex element, and let's do a couple things in here, maybe at least one or two. One thing, with all these elements, they should be set to No Wrap. And so we can just click here and set it to No Wrap, and that's the default. That's where it should be set. ClickFunnels, for some reason, has it set to Wrap all the time, and we're also going to put a border around it but for right now we are going to otherwise leave it alone except now I guess one thing we want to do is we want to say we want to have this be a column because we want all of our text line up from top to bottom like this so we're going to put it, this in a column format now let's go back out to the outer flex element because I forgot to do something there we want that as a row we want this to be no wrap as well. And again, we have the border around the outside. So you always want to turn off that no wrap. You will very rarely, if ever, use wrap. So now that we have what is going to become our column set up here, we want to duplicate this two more times. So now we have three columns. So we have the equivalent of what we have up here. Now for the outer row, this will be set at, normally be set at 1170. So let's just say we're going to do the exact same thing down here. And that's what 1.0 1 would have been as well. So we'll change this to pixels and we'll just go, we want this to be 1170 pixels wide. So we have that. And of course, with any of these flex containers, you have all your padding and everything right here that you can affect. And same thing with all of the inner um, elements as well. So now inside of this inner element, we want to put in all of these text items. So let's just, well, in fact, let me do this. Let me just copy, or I don't even know, need these up here anymore. So let me just grab this one and drag it down here. And then let's just copy this a bunch of times. And three, four, five, six times. And then let's just grab another one from up here. 
and we will drop this down here in the middle. And let me just grab another one as long as I'm up here. Let me just see if I can grab that and just drag it down. That did not work. Sometimes you got to grab, oops, sometimes you got to grab the little move arrows here. Sometimes you do not. I find that generally speaking, when you're working with flex elements, you have to grab the move arrow in order to get it to go into place. And so all we're going to do now is we're just going to clone this a couple of times. And you can see right now already what they're doing is they are lining up in the middle because some of the flex settings have already been set. But what you're also seeing here is they are already exactly the same height. So that again is a built-in function because the stretch uh, uh, value, the stretch value for I forget which one of the properties, um, that is automatically set in here. So what we need to do now is we can come into, let's say let's come into the center one and we can say, okay, we want to line self to the top. And we can do that, we can do the center, we can do the bottom, but we can also just leave this turned off. Now they may be turned on automatically. Let me just see here if it's automatically turned on. Um, no, it was not. You see here, if I click on one of these, that becomes blue. If you click on this again, it clears that out. Because all we have to do now is go into the outer element and we can say here, where do we want this to be lined up? At least we should have been able to. I could be wrong. Let's go here. We want to align. Okay, so here we aligned all the items to the top. But what happened is it took off that stretch. So it's align items of stretch, which makes them all full height like that. So in this case here, I was thinking that we could come in here. And in fact, there should actually be another item in here, I think. Um, now that I see that, I think that's one that's missing. But they have it at the at the inner level here as we just saw so let's come in here and let's go back to our settings and like i said we can do it at the top we can do it at the middle and we can do it at the bottom but again let me see here that's actually causing us a problem too because we got that going on so that's not working either let me pause here for a minute okay i haven't worked on this element for a while so i kind of forgot a few things so up here at the top we're going to leave this as well, actually, let's just turn this off and see what happens. So we don't need this turned on at all. What we need, I was looking at the wrong area here. We need this right here, the justification. That's what I was looking for. So we can justify it to the top, the center, the bottom, or like we had on the other, we can, if we hover here long enough, it'll show us space around, space between, and then space evenly. And I forget, did what did we have on the other one? Let's take a look here. We can go back here into our code. Oops, wrong code. Uh, let's come into the CSS code we had here, space evenly on that one. So let's come here, and this one was with space evenly. So there we go, space evenly. Now we will come into this element right here as well. We will go to our settings, and we will scroll down here to space evenly. And I suspect if we come into this top one here, go to the settings, uh, I think it is already space evenly because there's no extra space in there. Yeah, it did not move at all. So again, in here, you can change everything. You can, let's say this element here, let's put some uh, margin on the top of that. Let's see if it moves it down. So that moved that down some too. So by putting in your margin, it will affect things. Also, if you put padding on any of these elements in here, and in, in, in 2.0, it's a lot easier to put the padding on because you can just do it with a slider here instead of having to do it with CSS, which you would have to do with some elements inside of uh, 1.0. And then also, what else was I going? Oh, the other thing I was going to show you is the gap. That's another feature that is not included in 1.0. In fact, none of the flex stuff is included in 1.0. We got a gap here, so we can say we want less of a gap or more of a gap. And you can see what in this case what it's doing is making the box actually grow taller uh, and smaller on the outside edge there. So we don't really want to affect that, so we will make this 1.5 as it was but you can also affect the gap between these columns here so we can come in and affect the gap there by doing this gap right here we can make it more of a gap or we can make it less of a gap down to no gap at all and we'll set it back to about 1.5 where it was and then of course with any of these elements like i said the outer element you can set all the paddings and everything there the inner elements uh, the inner flex elements you can set all the paddings in there and then, as I said, with any one of these elements here, we can come in and now we can affect how we want it to look. And so let's say we want to put a background color on here. So we got a hideous background color there. 
and we can put in some shadow around it and we can also put some corners onto it oops come on open up corners there we go let's put some corners on here let's make a little bit more of a corner and so now you can build out three columns side by each exactly looking the same same height and really give a nice layout to your page so that's all i have for this video if you got any questions just let me know